Now, ceiling insulation, why is it important? Because other than draft proofing, it's the single most important element in making your home energy efficient. Okay? If you don't have really good ceiling insulation, it's just not going to happen. All right, just before we get into insulation, I just thought it'd be nice to understand the difference. On the right hand side is energy efficiency of all the things that make and use energy. And on the left hand side, you've got the best energy of all, and that's the one that you don't have to use in the first place. So that's thermal efficiency working on the actual building envelope to make it more energy efficient. Let's just talk about R value and types of insulation. R is just resistance to heat. Why is this important? Because at some stage you're going to get up in the roof of your own home and have a look at what you've got, right? We're going to learn about this, so you'll have fun. <laughs> Maybe be careful on the ladder, okay? So if you've got no insulation, you've got about R0.1 or 0.2, that's just the plasterboard, okay? Almost nothing. And then you can basically go up. Every R1 is about 50 millimetres. Your joists are about 90. You get an idea of how it builds up and you can double up things to make more. How much do you need? Mm, I think that it's about R5 from Melbourne. The one on the left. It shows a measuring tape, right? So that's cellulose, that's um, paper, ground up paper. Uh, it is treated with uh, boron and boric acid, so that means it's mm, less likely to burn and, and the bugs don't want to live in it. But the thing about this stuff is, it's pretty cheap, right? So if you want a, if you want a cheap insulation, this is a pretty good bet. But it does over time, it compresses, it dishes like that between the joists and, and, uh, and across your house, right? and it tends to fall into the eaves as well if you've got eaves, okay? So it's not such a permanent thing, you might need to get it done again and again. Down the bottom, we've got polyester. So it's the same kind of stuff that you've probably got in your pillows. It's nice, it's people friendly. So on the bottom there you see a ceiling done with polyester bats. And on the top there, we've got the same kind of polyester bats but there's reflective insulation on top. So these things were called concertina full bats, can't get them anymore, but also note that it's a maintenance nightmare like that. So when you get in your roof, most likely you're going to find fiberglass bats, pink or yellow. If you're going to fit fiberglass bats, you've got to have all the PPE, right? The glasses, the, the everything to stop the little fibres getting in here. So... What does good look like? Well, all insulation that's sold has got to comply with the building code and it's not going to carry a flame. But really, when, if you're going to do ceiling insulation, you want to think about a few things. So how friendly is it for you to install if you're going to do a DIY, and I hope you do. How good is it for the planet? Is there a recycled component in the insulation bats? How's it going to be with rodents? How easy is it install? You know, are you going to want to handle it? Okay, shameless plug. Polyester bats is this stuff, 85% recycled component, pet bottles basically, that, that are made into little fibres. These things are made, they go through an oven and the, the fibres are just melted together. There's no glue, right? Awesome stuff and a really great price too. The thing to do is to establish what you've got what works you have to do to the existing, assuming you've got some existing insulation. So often you have to make good the existing. Sometimes you have to get rid of it too. We'll see a couple of examples. And then figure out what, you know, how you're going to top it up. The other thing that you want to uh, work out is, as well as the R value of what you're going to top up with, is the width of the bats, right? Because usually we use bats in a roof individual sections and they come in two different widths right 430 and 580 okay so are we keeping or are we throwing this yeah throwing yeah yeah that is just too bad <laughs> that is just too bad that's got to go right look this electrician <laughs> so it's a good thing we don't do this anymore right Look at the scorch marks there, just from the heat of the lamps, right? Okay, this one, these are downlights as well, right? So this is what happens. You put a downlight in, 
take a bat, put it somewhere else, right? By the way, if you've got just 5% gaps in your ceiling insulation, it equates to a 50% degradation of the overall insulation. But if you've got these kinds of downlights, uh, or this kind of arrangement, got about 20% of gaps in your ceiling insulation. So it really makes it almost useless. If you've got downlights, you really want to be able to insulate your ceiling properly. And the thing with downlights is, well, probably you can't because of what they are. IC4 rated downlights, they're LEDs, they're special integrated LEDs. What that means is that you can insulate either up to it or over it. So if you've got those, then you can do a great job of insulating your ceiling. So these are thermal images, infrared images. You can see the picture on your left, that's an electrical picture, right? That's an electrician um, in there doing that. He's moved the bats and didn't put them back, right? Which is just normal, absolutely normal. It looks all right, doesn't it? So long as it goes back. I see four rated downlights, put back. Are we keeping or throwing this? Eh, it's a bit 50-50, isn't it? If you're conscientious, you could probably untangle that and lay it out, right? This is the low-hanging fruit. Draft proofing is generally one of the most cost-effective efficiency measures you can do in your home. Um, it's permanent, so you feel a lot warmer in winter and cooler in summer. There's also various health co-benefits that result out of better thermal comfort in the home. Speaking of looking for them, what are drafts? Well, sometimes you'll have an obvious gap around a door. You might have a rattle or a whistle. You could also feel for cold or moving air. Here in Melbourne, we have very poor housing stock um, and it results in quite an uncomfortable winter. Here we have two examples in the extremes of winter and summer. To be honest, if you have a mouldy home, stop everything and make sure that problem is solved before you do any upgrades on your home. Um, this is a, a particularly bad example I found in Frankston a couple of days ago. So how would you do a good draft proofing install? This is an example of a product that EcoMaster retails and ESCC can install. It's a draft dodger. It sits on the door jam as opposed to in the door getting wedged. It's got a German manufactured seal that the door compresses onto. And in this case, it's a powder coated aluminium. It's gonna last for a long, long time and doesn't need to be painted at all. Uh, sealing under a door, perhaps. You might want a brush seal that's color matched with your door as well. This is a brand new home in Brunswick East, but have a look on the left, a massive gap that the builder has allowed in this home. So drafts are just whistling down the hall. So we quickly came in and popped on a sweep seal that matches the color of the doors. Sealing up gaps, cracks and wall vents. The first thing I would say is please don't use a cheap gap filler um, from a major retailer. These cheap gap fillers are again cheap for a reason. Um, they crack under pressure on the home and they can crumble away, um, not very nice. Some of them are probably a little bit toxic as well. They smell a bit funny. I would recommend a product like Fuller Seal Ultra Clear. It's fantastic. Um, it's flexible, it's easy to work with, cleans up easy, I love it. You may be familiar with the door knockers who'd like to install some stuff for free. Usually they're free for a reason, unfortunately. In this case, on the right, he or she who's installed it hasn't bothered to do the whole door. I think the door was too large for the seal that they had come with, so they just popped it on where they could and ran away. And the same thing on the left, they've sort of chopped it up into various bits to fit around various door hardware. And I think on the left side, it was coming off already. So often they won't clean the door and we'll stick it on and it'll fall off after a couple of weeks, usually. So the thing is about an uninsulated timber floor is that the temperature of the floor is pretty much the temperature outside, right, under the floor. So when you insulate it, the main difference is comfort, right, because the temperature of the floor becomes the temperature inside. Polyester is amazingly people friendly and the other beauty of it is because of the structure of the fibres, the fibres are all arranged 
across the roll and that means that you can staple it, right? And that's what you see here. It's a great DIY project, by the way. I can see that a, quite a few of you are pretty slim and uh, <laughs> you'd go right under the floor. Yeah. So this is polyester again. It's not quite as good a product as the other one, but it's still a reasonable product. But they haven't stapled it. No, that's too hard. They've put up a couple of packing straps, right? You think that this part is actually doing anything? Is that doing it? Is that doing anything? You know, it's like, why bother, really? Sometimes people think it's a good idea to put fiberglass bats under a floor. This was even held up with chicken wire, right? Nothing helps. Nothing helps. It's just a mess. So we're back here and the rule is, if it's beautiful, it's right. Okay? That's beautiful. That's right. Fixed hard up against the floor, right? No rodents, no air supply there, nothing but insulation up against the floor. But there's several ways that you can retrofit wall insulation. If you've got a weatherboard house, you can actually take some weatherboards off and you can shove um, bats in there, okay? A little uh, sections of flexible uh, polycarbonate that you can get from Bunnings. <laughs> Two bits of polycarbonate, bat in the middle. Shove it in, pull the polycarbonate out. So the, the way to tell is to take a power outlet off an external wall and have a look. You might want to turn the power off or you might want an electrician to do that. Up to you, be safe. Have a look in the wall, take some pictures. Try not to drop your phone in the wall. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> it's certainly worthwhile getting wall insulation. It's a bit harder, you know, than, than the ceiling. The ceiling's the easiest and the most important. If you've got a timber floor, a great time will be had by all. Um, doing that and the wall insulation really most of the time is for a professional um, to pump in the, the granulated fiberglass.